antenna deployed. Atomic microphones power. Tara, how are you today? I'm wonderful. Today we're going to talk about Teen Titans Go and the DC Superhero Girls Mayhem in the Multiverse, in which you play Batgirl, Raven, and Harley Quinn. So in your words, if you don't mind, I've seen it. I love the story. But uh, could you tell me, without too many spoilers, could you tell me the story in your own words? First of all, it's a genius movie. <laughs> it's brilliant mm -hmm. and hilarious. And anytime any writer takes on a multiverse, I'm instantly amazed by what kind of brain you need to successfully and seamlessly do that, which this movie does. And it explores um, the Teen Titans go kind of with the DC girls in hilarious um, fourth wall breaking antics. And um, the DC girls are facing a real threat and the Teen Titans Go crew ends up helping them sort of in um, a pretty heartwarming and hilarious way. And there's a lot of adventure and some funny songs and some great dialogue and um, nice eggs for the fans and it's just an all-around good time this movie you, mm -hmm. so you're playing batgirl raven harley quinn and in some scenes you're even talking to these characters are talking to each other do you record these uh when you're recording this and when you're in the booth recording this are you changing voices and talking to each other or do you record each character separately you know it's um different Sometimes we do them all together and sometimes we do the whole script down as Harley and the whole script down as Batgirl. I can't remember for this film. I, I should ask the director <laughs> what we did. But um, actually, I think for this it was different because they're two different directors. So I think I did my – I can't remember. Anyway, sometimes you go through as one and sometimes you go through the, as, as the other. And you as the actor and the director – um, and people that are in charge of editing can all make that decision on what's simpler because sometimes if you're doing one character and there's only one or two lines as the other character, then you'll just go through and do it. But sometimes if you're in these really heavy moments that you want to be present in those moments, you go through and you do that scene as that character. Does that make sense? Basically, both are true. Right. Yeah, totally. Do you ever, when you're doing both characters, do you ever slip in the other, into another one accidentally? No, not, it's very rare. Once in a while, like your eyes will misread a line and go, oops, that was a Harley line. But um, you don't actually mix emotionally, vocally, acting wise, those characters, because they are two independent entities that actually live inside me and come out to play when it's their turn. Oh three different characters three very separate voices although you can sort of a trained ear like myself can pick out your timber right and recognize that it's your voice but they're very separate characters what's the key to keeping these separate characters separate i really try whenever i'm creating a new character to give it something of its own in actuality many voices are very similar and there's just something something subtle about them that you know the difference from a phone call, not just because of caller ID, if it's this person or this person, even if they may sound similar, there's always something in there that differentiates the voice. So I really try as the actor conscientiously to do that so that that character lives in that world realm for people and not in another like I've been on shows where they'll say, hey, can you do Timmy Turner for this part? And I'm like, um, no, because Timmy Turner already lives in the fairly odd parents world. So we can do something like that, but we'll tweak it just a little, just enough. You know, maybe it's a little deeper, maybe it's a higher or sillier or whatever. So um, these characters are so independently themselves that I don't actually think about that. I just like am in the moment. So I know how Raven's gonna say everything. Or I'm in the moment and I know exactly how Holly's gonna say it. Or I know everything is Batgirl and I know how she's gonna say it. Did you see me take a minute to even think about what I was gonna do? No. no. It's no. just like I can't explain it. <laughs> it's amazing. It's a it's a talent. It's a it's a real talent. Thank you. And and then so is that sometimes the direction you mentioned? Do, do they use other characters as a jumping off point? And then, you know, my feeble brain, at the best I can come up with is, say we want Timmy Turner with a French accent. But is is that usually where the jumping point off is for you? Not necessarily Timmy Turner, but uh, another character. You know, it, it'll come up like when you have an audition for a show, they'll give you stage directions with a script called The Sides. So you have to read the stage directions because in animation, a line, whoa, is going to be different if you're falling off a cliff or you're seeing a hot guy or girl. So you have to read the stage directions to know what's going on. 
but they'll also, in addition to the sides, give you a drawing of the character and then a character description, sometimes a show Bible so you understand the world. And then you as the voice actor have to try to think, what do the creative team, what would make them most happy to hear this character doing? And sometimes you do a complete departure from what you think they initially wanted. I'll usually lay down three different versions right here in my home studio before I send it off. And they'll typically be one that I know is like really out there, but maybe that's what will book the part because that is what happened with Teen Titans. Um, when I auditioned for Raven, I was already playing like five different tragic teenage girls at the time, one <laughs> for the same network, Warner Brothers uh, Batgirl. So I didn't really know what I was going to do before to to really um, isolate her from the other girls. And I actually thought I was going to book Starfire because the character description for Starfire was she's a grown up bubbles. And I'm like, well, I am grown up bubbles. So I'll probably book that right. one. And then I do Raven just relying on my acting and being in the moments, but I know it's too similar to Batgirl. And on my way out, I asked Andrea Romano if I could try one more thing. And she said, sure. And I just had this idea to have this role behind everything she said. And it was just God shot. Like I so grateful that I had that idea and that Andrea let me try. You play these so many characters. I can, I don't have enough time. I've only got uh, a little bit of time with you. I couldn't possibly list all your characters that you're known for, but specifically the ones you play in these this movie, Batgirl, Raven, Harley. You play across various franchises and various forms of media. Which one would you say is the closest to Tara Strong? <laughs> Good question. You know, I feel really connected to all of my characters in a pretty profound way because so much of my self has gone into these characters and then they bleed into mine. Um, so it's challenging to really pick one, but I'd say I have a lot of similarities to Twilight because I really like to make sure everybody's good and happy. I don't read as much as her. <laughs> um, I'm very similar to Bubbles that I'm super duper sweet until you really do something terrible and then I will kick your butt. Not really physically, but I'm strong emotionally enough to walk away from something that's not right and I'll let people know. <laughs> so I'm like, you know, this really cute little sweet but don't mess with me kind of thing of bubbles. Then Raven, like I feel connected to her because she's um, always struggling for her true self and uh, loves to meditate and just be on her own. And I love that so much too. I love that. And um, really like tuning into like universe and other things and magic. She's just so special. She's like a really big part of me. And then Harley, I like have grown so much with her. You know, she started out as an abused woman and has now found her own power as this really cool kick-ass chick. And there would be days when I was working on video games and a line she said would be had something I had experienced that day. And I just grew my wings right alongside her. So they're all very important to me. And of course, Timmy's important because <laughs> he makes wishes come true. And Miss Minutes, like, oh my gosh, where'd she come from? She's like so important to me now. <laughs> uh, looking forward to next season of Loki, more Miss Minutes. Um, looks like I need to bring this bat plane in for a landing, running oh. out of a time here. But let me, uh, one more out the door. When I was a, a little boy, I used to have to get up early on Saturday mornings to beat my brother to the couch so I could get the good spot in front of the TV to watch the cartoons. But I'd have to get up even earlier than that to beat my parents into the kitchen so I could pour myself a big bowl of sugary goodness to get me through that morning. So Tara Strong, what was your favorite bowl of Saturday morning cereal and what cartoons did you watch? Oh, I loved Saturday morning cartoons with my sister. Um, we would watch the Smurfs and Qbert and the Jetsons and the Flintstones and this show called Wait Till Your Father Gets Home and yeah, um, the Justice League and oh my God, we watched everything. I loved it so much. Um, and as a kid, I really liked like Frankenberry, um, the pink one <laughs> with the yeah. marshmallows, which I probably would never eat today. Um, and the blueberry, like all those were really fun with the marshmallows in them. And I liked cookie crisp an awful lot. That was fun. Yeah, that was a good one. Big bowl of, big bowl of cookies, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I always liked the, uh, the Frankenberry and blueberry because they made better milk. Uh, Tara, thanks so much for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day. We'll see you on the other side. Thanks, Jamie. Bad antenna deployed. Atomic microphones power. Bad check. One, two. Testing. Back computer online.